Assalamu alaikum my dear students as you know we already have started this paper 9709 and we did first three question in our last session now uh, I'm going to explain a uh, question from 4 to onward okay and what is question for right now uh, let me check this uh, question four is uh, you know here basically this is trigonometric identity and we are going to prove it the right method always just take your left hand side and play your expertise and find your right hand side from the left hand side this is the only way Sometimes some students take both sides and end of the day they say they are equal. No, I don't recommend this method. The right way, just take your one side, your left side and then produce your right side from the left side. And you know, here, uh, first of all, you see angles in the right hand side, in the left hand side are not uniformed somewhere x and somewhere you see 2x so if you see them on the left side uh, on the right side all angles are in the uniform form this means x are already there so first of all by considering your left hand side you will break all 2x into x plus x so 2 sin x minus sin 2x or 1 minus cos 2x in this way you know 2 sin x minus 2 sin x cos x and 1 minus 2 cos square x minus 1 by applying the identity of sin 2x and cos 2x as sin 2x is equal to 2 sin x cos x and cos 2x is equal to 2 cos square x minus 1 and further by simplification you will get this right hand side that's it this way we do this type of question generally now I'm moving forward as yes, this word is very important hence or otherwise but here is only hence is written now you see this integral if you see carefully you see uh, the above part of this question it's uh, left hand sides integral and you know uh, you can remove the uh, you can substitute this left hand side by the right hand side of this equation which you already have proved and by again if you see 1 plus cos x the denominator 1 plus cos x and its numerator sin x if you take the derivative of 1 plus cos x you will see that the derivative is minus sin x just minus is missing you can multiply and divide by minus 1 and this way you know the integral of this would be 1 1 plus ln 1 plus cos x and then you apply the limit and hopefully you will have this answer and you have to simplify your answer in terms of ln k that's it it's very simple question free marks would be awarded to you by a little effort my dear now i'm moving to this my favorite question this is question five it's again free score marks free free score for this question okay let me explain this this is not the worth of explaining as it's you see very simple here you see first try to simplify x cube plus 3x square y minus y cube is equal to 3 you know my dear this is uh, implicit function as this is implicit function so how do you do how do you differentiate implicit function as you see x cube 3x square and then i told you the next term 3x square y you will apply product rule by product rule mean you will have 3x square dy dx and then plus 3y and you will uh, differentiate x square that way you will get 6x okay and uh, if you are still confused i am going to explain once again here 3x square plus 3x square dy dx plus 3 y times 2x this way and then minus y cubes derivative would be minus 3y square dy dx okay and then there is constant term 3 and this derivative is 0 and you know now you have two or three terms of dy dx collect them and 
then other term take to the other side and then take dy dx common and then make it subject this way you can do it this way okay i don't think you will have any issue in this question hence find the exact coordinate of the two point on the curve at which gradient of the normal is one okay the gradient of the normal is one so the gradient of tangent would be minus one because it's negative reciprocal is minus one and then you will plug minus one is equal to this dy dx and you will get uh, equation in terms of x and y and you will simplify and from there you can find the uh, two values of the curve which intersect same way my dear students here there is the question it's simple question it's like circular Maya type question which you usually uh, see in paper one but here look if first you have to find the shaded area you can find the shaded area by finding the area of the sector by taking pi radian as the angle of the sector 1 over 2 r square theta is the basic formula then why 1 over 2 r square sine theta by using the formula for area of the triangle subtract the area of the triangle from the area of the sector you will have the shaded area which is a segment okay and then fulfill the condition area of shaded segment is equal to sum of the area of the semicircles then you find the area of semicircles by taking half of a this way you will equate them basically they are same semicircles so you need to calculate only one area of the full circle and put it equal to the area of shade, shaded region and after simplification of this equation you will have show that theta is equal to 1 over 2 pi plus sine theta i don't think you will have any confusion regarding this i have given you the hand my dear you can easily do it now i'm going to move forward the next part the next part is more simple more simple how you will do it look you know whenever you want to prove that the value of theta or value of the solution lies between the between two given values between two given values how you do it look you just convert this given equation into one function you can bring all the sides in one side so you can say f theta is equal to 1 over 2 pi plus sine theta minus theta this way you will have function in terms of theta okay and then you need just take 2.2 and plug there and you will have one answer and then again by using the same function you plug 2.4 in place of theta you will have another value of theta they must vary by sign one should be positive and the other should, should be negative this way mean they crosses the x-axis and this confirms that they have the root the value of theta between these two values if they vary by sign and now i'm going to move towards this question seven is again lovely question uh, look there are two complex numbers are given there and he told you uh, give your answer uv and u or v my dear first you just multiply them and there is only one rule when you multiply you will see somewhere you get iota square term iota square is equal to minus one so uh, if you get iota square minus iota square somewhere this means you can uh, put minus one this way that term becomes a uh, real term and same way u over v mean when you write u over v uh, just take v's conjugate and multiply and divide it and after simplification you will get your answer in terms of in the form of x plus iota y i don't think they are free mark free credit never miss it by little practice you can do it okay uh, i don't think i don't know why students always complain about p3 it's so simple sweet paper yeah it's free it's free it's a star paper okay now i'm going to part two on an uh, on a sketch of an argon diagram show that a and b representing the complex number u and b just a's point are given and b's point are given a's point mean a minus 3 square root of 3 1 and the v is 
square root of 3 and 2 the real part value denote x and imaginary part value represent y so this way you can make the points x y from u and v and just plot them on your diagram and with o when you see uh, angle of each could be calculated by tan inverse of imaginary part of a real part okay and you will see end of there when you have plotted that the first you get calculate a o b first you need to calculate angle of b and then angle of a and then you will see that a o b is 2 or 3 pi your calculation must be in radian form now i am going to question 8 already you are familiar here he is mentioning maximum point the function is there for maximum point you need to differentiate so differentiate it here you need to apply product rule one of the function is x plus one the other is exponential function just differentiate by using uv prime plus vu prime and by differentiating just put it equal to zero and then you will see one value of x that would be positive and that would be value of m for this and now for the next part he's saying find the shaded area just integrate it by integration by parts integration by parts you can do this you can take uv minus uv primes integral v would be x plus 1 and du would be e minus 1 over 3x du you need to integrate and v you need to differentiate and then you can plug this uv minus uv primes integrals my general non formula okay and i don't think you will have any confusion and now it's again the simple one and first of all you have this fun uh, partial fraction you uh, i don't think i need to explain it um, okay if you can if you want i can give you the hint put it equal to x minus 4x square and then a times 2 plus x square and bx plus c is equal to 3 minus x and then you can remove the denominators on both sides and then you can take x is equal to 3 this way you will have one of the value of uh, b or c whatever and then you can take any value of x but not 3 and then you will take any other value of x but not again two values which you already have used and this way you can get the value of a b and c by comparing coefficient you can also do that okay now i'm here once again okay hence obtain fx in ascending power okay uh, you know you will write a into 3 minus x raised minus 1 and in the same way bx plus c into 2 plus x square raised minus 1 okay and uh, then you will use the first of all you will convert these expressions into 1 plus x raise n this is the must con uh, first step 1 plus x raise n then use the identity 1 plus nx time plus n time n minus 1 over 2 factorial x square okay this way you will do both these expressions and then you will sum up all these by considering their powers and uh, the required terms this way you can do that question now the next question two lines are given show that the lines are skewed first you will equate them you will have two uh, you will have three pairs of equation you will have three equations in terms of s and t just take two and you will see that uh, they will not give you a point of intersection because they will not satisfy the third equation which you have missed okay just by taking s and t you will calculate the value of s and t and you will use these values in the third equation in terms of s and t that th this will not satisfy this means these line belongs to different parallel planes okay that way we do and now i should not do this second part and third part because these are out of the syllabus this way you my dear can do okay you will attempt and this paper and then you can discuss it with me again